الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله a beautiful uh, narration أثر the salaf from Imam Ibn Abdul Bar رحمه الله تعالى who's reported to have said if those who have no knowledge would remain silent the differing would come to an end what a powerful ether inside. And I reflected upon this ether today when I first heard it for the first time or read it for the first time. Because when we look at most of the fitna that we have, let's just take the West, because but trust me, the fitness in Indonesia, the fitness in Ethiopia, the fitness in Somalia, the fitness between Ahl Sunnah, everywhere. We have the same problems. Some of our brothers are more extreme in tabdir and takfir, and some of our brothers are more extreme, are more easy, too easy going, and sit and do anything and bend the principles of Ahl Sunnah with Jama'ah. And then there are those who are trying to be as balanced and in the middle path as much as possible without following in, falling into either camps. And may Allah bless us all to be from amongst them. Amin. So I was reflecting on this ether because when we look at the fitna, how much fitna can we think of? How many times have the brothers said, don't sit with him, don't go to this conference, don't go to this one? <clears throat> when they are not the people to go to return back to for our affairs. If we were to leave these differences, when the ulama have differences between themselves, between Sheikh so and so and Sheikh so and so, these two Mashaikh have met Tibdi or say or refuted this sheikh but yet we want to be the first to run into it and we want to be the first to translate the fitna and we want to be the first to spread the fitna from Yemen to Saudi Arabia to America to the UK to France to Belgium to wherever Wallah Mista'an but if we were to practice these athar of the salaf and to realize the importance of stopping where the salaf stopped and the importance of leaving those the fears of fitna, especially to the people of knowledge, and not entering into them, then a lot of the fitna will be squashed. Because although you may have fitna between ulama, and that doesn't mean ulama don't make mistakes, and that there's sometimes fitna that, that arises. But where does the problem? It usually comes from their students. It usually comes from those who may not understand the Messiah completely. It usually comes from those who are totally jahil, who have no right to speak, but yet they spread the fitna. They're the ones who go and are the foot soldiers of people and make fitna in the various communities, make an empty hand and ask this one, what do you say about so-and-so? What do you say, oh, so-and-so said this. Brother, why did you quote from Sheikh so-and-so? Brother, why did you sit with Sheikh with so-and-so? Oh, we heard that you took knowledge from so-and-so. We heard your friend was so-and-so. But if we just kept silent, we just sought knowledge. We just did our best to, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would have less time for this fitna. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.